Hey guys, um, I'm going to be going through a live bait trace using circle hooks, um, specifically to target yellowfin tuna. Um, I do use these very successfully as well on Dorado, um, and I've caught quite a few bullfish using the same method. Um, the reason why you're using a circle hook as opposed to a normal J hook is you actually hook the fish in the corner of the mouth. So should a, a toothy critter, say like a kudo or a wahoo or a snook come along, you do actually have a chance. You might actually be able to land the fish by using a circle hook. Also, you have a more positive hook up rate. So you do hook more fish if you're not lazy about it. I'll explain that a little bit more in depth. The other reason why you'd want to use it is because you hook it in the corner of the mouth, there's very little wear and tear on your leader. So fighting a big fish for extended periods of time, you're actually not wearing on your lead at all so you can use the same trace over and over and over again okay mustard uh, tuna circle hooks they're between the fine wire and the demon circle hook um, basically they've got a slight offset which is which is brilliant um, it's not IGFA endorsed um, because you can hook the fish a little bit deeper but I find you definitely get a lot more hookups with the slightly offset on the tuna circle hook the sizes that I prefer to use are a 5 and a 6 tuna circle hook. Um, tuna have got a massive eye, so basically I prefer to use fluorocarbon. Um, if you look at the size of a tuna's eye, you can see very, very clearly. So I do believe that fluorocarbon does make a, a big difference. I use 065, 060, or 070. That's about 50 pound or so. For this demonstration purpose, I'm going to use Kingfisher Clear Leader Line. Um, there's no problem with this stuff either. Maxima Ultra Green is also very, very good as far as leader line goes. So I'm going to cut myself off about a meter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snell or fix rig the circle hook. Again, I do this because you get a much more positive hook up rate. So I go through the eye of the hook and I come from the top of the hook through the eye and down to the bottom of the hook. The reason for this is when you put pressure, it turns the circle hook in and it, you get a more positive hookup. So I go from the top of the eye, from the point side, through the eye and down. Okay, I'm going to tie a three turn figure of eight across the, across the shank. So one, two, three turns. Coming from the front. And I'll open that up on the shank. And you can actually see there's a figure of eight, but there's just an extra turn in there. I wet it. Pull it tight. You can snell or nail knot or do whatever, but I find this knot much faster and much easier to tie. I leave it a little bit of a tag end. I've never had that knot fail on me. And as you can see, is it wants to, when you put pressure, it wants to turn the hook in. If you come from the other way, it wants to push the hook out. So it's very important to come in from the top of the eye. As I said, this is a very effective trace. As long as you're not lazy and you make sure the trace is 100% right. Okay, on the other end, I'm going to put a power swivel, size 4, size 5, size 6, not too serious, around about there. And I'm going to do a three turn figure of eight on this side, because I would be tying with fluorocarbon. Two turns can slip. I'm going to pull that figure of eight nice and tight on that end. And that's all there is to this trace, to be honest. So you've got a meter of fluorocarbon with a power saw. This obviously, you must put a power saw because as a live bait swims, he twists up your main line if you don't, if you don't have a power saw there. Okay, so now rigging the bait. This is the next very, very important part to this. I'll take a small little cable tie. I just cut it at a bit of an angle in the thick part so it's a little bit sharper and a little bit easier to push through the live bait. So what you do is you go through the bridge of the R, above the R, behind the bone and you push it through and then out the top of the other eye. This is obviously a frozen mackerel, so a little bit more difficult. I'm just making the hole through. And there we go, you see the cable tie goes through the bridge of the eye. Pretty simple. Push the cable tie through. And then you want to pull it tight on the live bait. Obviously you don't want a gap there. So I pull it quite tight, you are over bone. So that's not a problem. And you can see it's really nice and tight. You have your scissors and you just cut it. 
you can actually pre-rig a few of these in your live well. Um, a lot of the guys use it for fishing for bullfish. They'll pre-rig their baits and they can switch and when they tease the, the bullfish up, they'll switch and they'll throw the live bait at it. Now you can really cast this thing and it's not going to come off. And then I just go through the, behind the cable tie, obviously the hook facing up. And that's it. And if you're not lazy, you make sure you use a cable tie. Don't push it through the bait. If you push it through the bait, sometimes when the, when the, when the, when the game fish grabs it, the circle hook can turn back in on the bait. With a cable tie, it's almost impossible for it to turn back in on the bait. So if you're lazy and you cable tie your baits and you make sure everything's 100% right, this is a very, very, very effective way of, of fishing for, for tuna, dorado, and bullfish.